hello. Well, we had our first frost of the season yesterday, so it's sort of a funny time to be talking about gardening. But there's also a perfect opportunity with winter ahead of us to think how you can change your home gardening and landscaping for the better. Pollinators such as bees, hummingbirds, they've been in decline in Canada over the last decades, in particular here in Ontario. And there are small changes, cost-effective changes, that you can employ in your own properties that will help these species recover and stabilize their numbers. So what we'll offer for you in this following video, better management practices to promote pollinators at your home and in your cities. So here are five simple steps that you can take to help pollinators at your household. The first thing you gotta do is plant some flowers, but not just any flowers. Make sure you stick to native species that bloom throughout the growing season. Actually, letting a spot of your yard naturalize and provide a natural variety of native species is a great way to provide habitat and variety for local pollinators. Another thing you can do is keep an area of your yard specifically for maintaining litter like this, leaves, twigs, anything that will provide a warm habitat in the winter and provide natural compost in the future. Some of the challenges that are faced when uh, dealing with wild growth is that people's mindsets are more attuned to the, uh, the manicured lawns. And that's what we've been hit with in the media and everything else. So we need to shift the perspective because manicured lawns don't really do much for, uh, for pollinators. So we need to normalize wild growth and make it mainstream. Now it's important to hydrate, and not just for us, but for the local species around you too. So it's important to provide water for them, be it a frog pond, a bird bath, or even just little collecting stones that will provide little pools of water for insects without the risk of them drowning. Pesticides are one of the major reasons for pollinator decline, so make sure you keep it natural when you begin your gardening adventure, so that you don't kill off all those native bee species you've so carefully cultivated. So you may be asking yourself, is this effective, and how much is it going to cost me? Well, we have examples. A man by the name of Barrett Erickson in Ottawa has done a great effect from a pollinator garden where he's let go to the wild planted native species and the bees are flocking to it. As well, at an elementary school in Dunville, Ontario, they have a wilding place, planting much goldenrod and things like this, where the bees and pollinators have flocked and it's helping out the local farmers. And speaking of farmers, many are implementing their own beehives and letting the edges of their fields naturalize so that they'll be able to help pollinate their plants. Now, as for the cost of money, well, it's very cheap, you know? You just buy a couple 2x4s, make yourself a nice raised bed, and then let it go to wild or plant some natural plants, and there you have it. Your bee habitat has been created. Or, if you have a nice set of property, you can just let it go to wild, and then you'll save money on cutting the grass, and maybe even a lawnmower if you like. How can we actually make this into a possible thing, make a difference? First of all, you can get in contact with your local farmers or your beekeepers and get them to get involved with the community more. You know, start making posts, attending the local fairs, advertising their trade and how it's going to very much help them to have these bee populations and pollinators on the rise again. As well, social media will be a great influence. Post things about bees, post your natural spaces so that people can get out there and see that this is actually making a difference. You got anything else to say, Steve? Oh, hey, Nick. I was just enjoying this pollinator habitat. Well, hope that you've enjoyed this quick dive into home landscaping, gardening, and pollinator promotion. Don't forget, we need pollinators. Almost half the food that we consume on our dinner plates is because of the fertilization provided by them. And they need our help. So let's all pitch in and do our part, and together we can take care of business. <laughs>